I am here with Corey Desiderio from The Sun. Corey, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Good to see you, Corey. You're, uh, you're a good example of uh, someone that has really paid their dues. Um, the right, you've done everything the right way, and uh, and you know, obviously, a big admirer of the work you do and how hard you work. Um, so, I want to kind of keep people that are involved with high school sports, you know, at the forefront. That's why we started doing this show. So. How's everything going with the sun right now? And what are you guys doing to kind of keep yourselves busy? Yeah, we're, tr we're, so right now we've, we've sort of decreased the size of the papers because obviously there's not a lot going on right now. But um, one of the things I really pride myself on and our writers at the sun is really doing a lot of storytelling um, as opposed to, you know, just game recaps and stuff like that. Since we're a weekly paper, by the time the paper lands, you know, on your doorstep, on a Thursday or a Friday, everyone that really cares knows the, the, the score of the game and stuff like that. So um, right now we're just, you know, searching out the best stories of, you know, the coaches and these ADs and these, you know, these kids and what they're doing to, you know, stay busy and keep their uh, head in it and, you know, yeah. work, working out physically. So if that, if that opportunity does come, next month or whenever in a few weeks that you know they're ready and we'll be ready to yeah for, for the most part it's just that we can't really go out and do things do what I we know. Need to do it's, it's it's one of those things where like i mean if if we could physically go out even if they didn't play games we still ha would have stories to do yeah you know, so that's the hardest part um i hear um this is the first time on zoom it is yeah, yeah that's what so. our softball team in the summer uh they sent a group text and like you want to do a zoom hangout on saturday i'm like this will be a good trial run to see how it goes <laughs> working good uh my family like every night there's like 20 windows open all different people yeah i guess you could go up to 100 yeah it's, it's wild like a hour type thing they're in yeah. love it i pop in for like five or ten minutes and like two hours later after i put my son to bed i'll hop back on i'm like you people are still mm -hmm. here yeah <laughs> You know, I mean, but we're doing well without sports. Uh, you yeah. know, it's going along. But you know, Corey, you're a sweet home grad. Mm -hmm. 2010. Yep, 2010. Okay. Then you went to Brockport, and did you go for communications and for journalism? Is that what you did? I did. I was. I'm. I'm one of the lucky ones that went to school for it, and, and I'm currently doing it now. So, yeah. The the plan. I mean, I never really thought of myself as um, a writer in high school before I went to college. Um, it's just, I could never see myself doing anything other than something related uh, with sports and what, what better way to that get paid to pay attention to sports. It's like a dream, dream job, really. You went to Brockport, you mentioned earlier, you were with the Medina, Medina Journal Register as one yeah. of the first jobs out of college. And then you were part time with the news and now you're on the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, for them when you're doing a great job i know you haven't been doing this for decades but <laughs> at least the last 10 years or so what has been like is there a story you did sports related game related or just like a feature story that you've done that you just haven't forgotten about like this was like the story that you're going to carry on and remember for a long time uh one of my favorite stories was um while I was still at the Buffalo News. Um, it was a football story about um, these twins from Lancaster, the Kalo brothers. Um, Jacob was um, the starting left tackle when I think Ryan Manziel, he was a senior, so was that group, the, the, their first group. Um, I think when they sort of started winning, um, or no, it was their second year. Um, so his he has a twin brother who um is legally blind and i saw his, um jacob on twitter like retweeting some of his brother's work and his brother's like amazing at graphic design on the on the computer um, and i sort of wrote about their relationship um and stuff like that so that that was one of the first times that one of my stories was on the front page of the sports section um, so that's always cool to see see you out front and just the story was really incredible i just talked with him um his brother um coach rupp and the ad brian wild just for like an hour or two one day i stopped by before practice and you know they were super nice kids and i thought the story really 
uh, turned out great. If you can get your hands on that, I'd love to have it to, to see it. If you can, yeah. read it, if you can find it, but um, you use Dave Ricky a lot. Uh, I do. Yep. Dave uh, has, has contributed articles here as well. And, and mm -hmm. he said that, you know, you know, the game recaps are good, but you know, you got to go to those practices to find those feature stories. Mm -hmm. if you don't have the relationship with the coaches. It's going to be a hard to find those. Do you find yourself uh, getting those feature stories by going to those practices and developing those relationships with coaches? Yeah, for sure. Um, Dave gets out a lot more than I do. I wish I could get out more, um, but being an editor, you have a little bit more responsibilities with laying out and reading stuff. Um, but yeah, every, every chance I could really get if um, it's really great to go out there and, you know, shake hands with people and get to know them um, on a personal level instead of, you know, through messaging and texting and emailing and stuff like that. It definitely, this is a people person business and got to be out there on, uh, through the rain and the snow and uh, show you care. Um, and that sort of helps develop the relationship and, you know, and then we'll start opening up to you and you can get those good stories. Yeah. I mean, when you go and cover a game, that's great. You know, people want to know what happens and, you know, the stars of the game and that sort of thing, but you don't have time to really have, you know, to get those feature length stories. So doing the game mm -hmm. is great, but you really got to go, and make those contacts and then just call them all the week, those coaches. And so you find that to be the way to, to get those stories you're looking for. Yeah, for sure. That's, and that's what I love about the sun being a weekly paper is I could go to a game on, you know, a Thursday or a Friday and I don't have to write it up right away. I could take my time interviewing a couple people as opposed to, you know, the star player and the coach. Um, so one thing I don't miss about the Buffalo news is the daily <laughs> deadline. So, um, you know, the sun sort of lends itself to writing more in depth and um, doing more storytelling that way. Do you find yourself doing anything outside the box than what you thought you might be doing when you were in school? Or are you doing things now that uh, maybe are a little different, like instead of just writing? Like, are, do you find yourself getting into photography or doing videos or anything like that? And uh, I mean, you're on social media. In fact, I, mm -hmm. you were on social media way before I was. I was seeing <laughs> Um, that was that was my second account. My first one, someone tried to hack into it a couple of times and it got shut down. So like I was just nearing like a thousand followers. And I'm like, now I gotta start over again. But now I'm up I think I'm close to like fifteen hundred. So yeah, I'm making my way back. It's but, painful, I know. <laughs> but yeah, so my first job in Medina, I was the one man sports crew. So I did my own photos and stuff like that. Um but um now luckily I have uh, some photographers that that do that and but um at Brockport I was pretty we were pretty lucky um in the sense that we were a small school and a small production staff so we all did a little bit of everything whether it was writing and um shooting photos and editing and doing layout and stuff like that um so actually the the guy that I took over the Medina wow. paper for went to Syracuse and he was like a really good writer so before I even applied for that job um, I called him just asking him about, you know, what's it like? Um, and he's asking me like, do you know, InDesign, do you know how to lay out and everything? I'm like, yeah, I've done all that stuff. He's like, well, you're way ahead of me. Cause at Syracuse, you know, they have this great journalism program, but all he did was write. So like in that sense, I'm, I'm really grateful that um, I did go to a smaller school and you learn all these different skills. Um, so, and I'm using all of them today. Um, Victoria, it's been a short year, I guess you could call it. Mm -hmm. school, school science, but I'll ask you, so far this year, what has been a moment uh, or is one athlete or one play or one team in particular that uh, impressed you more than, than another? Um, I would say probably the team I was closest with this year might have been the Hamburg girls soccer team. Um, they were, they won their first sectional title since 92, so the year I was born, which was sort of cool because, you know, no no one on the team was born the last time they had a sectional, they won a sectional title on that team, um, and it was real, it was real cool um, to follow them. Um, they have one senior, Laura Bogner, who's going to UB, and she's their only senior starter, so a lot of the girls will be back next year, so I'm really excited um, in the fall to cover.